Hi everyone, good morning. We're just waiting till people are, uh, well, people are still getting into the session. So five more minutes and then we'll start. Thank you for being here. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll start in five minutes while well, people are still get coming into the session. Yeah, we'll uh, start in three minutes. See that even Patrick uh, has joined us. Patrick Derder, welcome Patrick. Yes, I uh, think we can start. Um, good morning, every uh, everyone, or evening, uh, afternoon, uh, wherever you're based. Welcome to this uh, Bank on Buy-in webinar, uh, hosted by uh, CCNC Solutions and Van Hare Learning Solutions, about the buy-in certification. Some uh, a little intro uh, regarding this session. Please, if possible, um, keep mute on. Turn off your video if that's possible also. And uh, you can chat for questions well in the webinar chat. Uh, I hope that everybody's able to. Also, additionally to this uh, webinar, we tried something new. And is, that is that we added everybody, everyone to a MS uh, Teams team. Uh, so you can also chat there in the team uh, that will also be used for the um, uh, panel session. You can also find some files there and some background info. Uh, yeah, uh, I hope that everybody's able to put their questions in the chat if that's possible. Maybe you can have a look if you can. 
Okay, then, uh, well, I'll be your moderator for this session, Maris van der Plas, director of Van Aren Learning Solutions. Yeah, to start off uh, the agenda for this webinar. Um, uh, as mentioned, questions you can put in the chat. Uh, I will then moderate these to the uh, speakers, uh, also for the Q&A and the panel session. Uh, there we do try to create a dialogue. Uh, so that it also becomes a bit more interactive uh, for everybody listening on the other side. As mentioned, uh, via Teams. Uh, let me show it to you uh, briefly. Here, via Teams, uh, you can come. In, everybody's invited uh, to the MS Teams, so you can join there and you can find more information on this webinar. There's a live chat going on there. You can also find some files here. And there's also made a wiki available for you so that during the session also later on you can uh, add some questions there if you like uh, yes then um, regarding the agenda first here you have the introduction by me uh, then uh, Vish uh, from ccnc solutions is gonna uh, allocate why buying certification matters uh, after that we have warren henking uh, from Sutton there UK, uh, who's going to give some case studies and experiences from his side on. And then we have Venken uh, from CIMB, uh, also ex uh, explaining his experiences so far regarding buy-in and the buy-in certification. Then we have a Q&A, and then we have the Teams uh, panel. Um, yeah, just a little... Uh, um, Okay, then uh, first up, what is buying? Uh, buying is the banking industry architecture network. Uh, buying is a collaborative of non for profit of a non for profit ecosystem of leading bank technology providers, uh, consultants, and academic partners. Uh, the aim of buying is to establish, promote, and provide a common framework for banking interoperability. I Probably most of you already know what buy-in is, but therefore a short intro. Um, buy-in organization and buy-in members, uh, there's quite a few of them so far. We have financial institutes, uh, with well-known companies such as City, Sutton there, uh, Bangkok Bank, um, you name it, PNC. We've been participating for many years. We also have partners. These can be vendors and academic partners who uh, support buy-in. Uh, who support buying, work with buying, and uh, benefit from buying. Uh, then, short intro about Van Haren and CCNC. Uh, Van Haren is the buying certification partner. Um, we host the uh, buying professional certification. This means that we facilitate via exams that professionals can be certified in buying, and we also accredit uh, training partners in buying. That brings me to CCNC Solutions, buy member and uh, launching training partner, also accredited training partner with Buy-in, who's hosting this webinar today with us and also facilitated in organizing everything. So uh, thank you uh, very much for that, uh, Ramesh and Vish for helping. Yeah. Then also after the webinar, um, you already have access to the Teams uh, via Microsoft Teams, so you can find more resources there. We provide you the recording of this webinar, a short link where you prov can provide feedback if you like to, and also all participants will get access to the buy-in 2090 ebook. If you have any questions in the meantime so far regarding any subject or content, please email to marketingvanaren.net, and we'll be more than happy to support you. Then now we will go over to Fish, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Fish, let me just, uh, Fish, I think you would need to unmute yourself. Danny, can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's start. Thank you, Maurice. And thank you yeah. again for everyone. As uh, Maurice said, I also have to say good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good night, everything. <laughs> so we are uh, talking to a global audience, I think from different locations. We have two sessions today uh, because of the time difference, one now and one after about another five hours or so. 
And uh, since most of you are awake now, I hope you'll continue to be awake throughout the session. So very briefly, yeah. uh, who are we? Why are we here? As uh, Morris introduced, uh, CCNC Solutions, one of the accredited training partners and a member of Bayan. I think, by the way, I don't know, some people pronounce it Bayan, some people pronounce it Bayan. So I would continue to say Bayan, okay? So, yeah. so basically, uh, we, the three C's stand for communicate, uh, connect, communicate, and collaborate. That's uh, uh, our slogan. Uh, right now, we are connected. We, hopefully, we are communicating. And, of course, there's opportunity for all of us to collaborate. So all of you are uh, in this different capacity in this uh, webinar. Uh, all of you are uh, IT professionals or banking professionals, and uh, many of you work for uh, different vendor organizations, the solution organizations. Uh, many of you are working for end user banks, so the mix back here. So let me try and cover all the different areas. So just a brief introduction to us. We actually, uh, I would say the simple thing is we live and breathe architecture. We actually have experts and mentors in different locations in the world, and we actually help companies to uh, through upskilling, uh, training, consulting in this area of architecture, and now we are actually focusing on Bayam. So, I'll, with that, I will start uh, going to the uh, proper presentation of why Bayam certification matters. Okay, there are three segments I would like to talk about. One is the banking professionals in your own right. As I said, you could be a banking professional, who self-employed, contracting, or would be working for a bank or a financial institution, or it could be working for a vendor or a solution provider. Irrespective of that, every banking professional who has been looking at Bayan certification, so my topic today is about certification. There's a Bayan certification program, which as Morris introduced is uh, managed by Manharan, and we are one of the leading uh, sort of certification training providers. So what does it give the individual? First of all, it gives a global recognition for knowledge and competence. So your peers throughout the world can recognize you as one of the persons who can be trusted for the knowledge of this particular framework. What we have found is those who are got certified, those who pass the exam, the first thing they do is go to LinkedIn and exhibit their badge. So there is a professional pride and self-confidence and morale, which, which cannot be ignored. It provides, of course, it should provide global career opportunities for in the in the banking architecture area. This is since uh, most of you are starting this are pioneers in this activity, one of the first to move into this area. So ba basically, there is a lot more opportunities, and of course, it through enhanced visibility to industry peers and decision makers. Most of all, the thing I want to emphasize is it provides a big picture context for whatever you are doing. You could be a solution architect, integration architect, communication architect, software developer, designer, tester, whatever it is, or, or, or a banking professional, banking uh, you know, a business person. What you're doing today is very important, but many times while we are engrossed in our day-to-day -day activities with heads down, we forget why do we exist. So this big picture context in terms of how do you fit into this big picture in terms of the banking architecture, that actually is one of the key contributions that uh, people can you know, offer to uh, ban offers to individuals. Mm -hmm. Next, I would look at the next segment. <clears throat> How does it help the banks themselves? Banks and financial institutions, whether you're a bank, you existed for uh, hundreds of years, with a lot of legacy systems, or the new digital banks, or uh, banks with no brick and bricks and mortar that goes into the you know the direct into the age of digital digitized age, doesn't matter. There is a commonality. All these banks are looking for fast tracking to digital technology, digital transformation. Every bank is on a digital transformation journey, but depending on where you are, what you are doing. The banks are in a different uh, in a phase shift, but everyone wants to fast track. How do you fast track? Instead of reinventing solutions every time, you can pick the ready-made components that are available from a framework like Bayan. That I see as the very first opportunity for banking 
professionals get certified and be more proficient in Bayan. Of course, the banks want to reduce solution design and development effort and costs. So as I said before, they don't want to reinvent the wheel. So these components produced by Bayan can be used very effectively. To use them effectively, of course, it's better to be knowledgeable and certified. Banks want to produce technology. Today, there is a, a multitude of options for technology solutions. Vendors come and go, but standards like Bayan stay forever. So for the banks or financial institution, one of the biggest challenges, how do you select the right products and solutions that are future proofed? That means they are come here, gone tomorrow, then it's very difficult to, you know, uh, to co provide continuity. So Bayan certification provides the professionals working within the bank, the knowledge to select the right type of products uh, that, that will be future proof. It provides opportunities for collaboration for the banks between partners and peers and also customers. And it, it gives them opportunity to provide better enhanced customer experiences. And of course, a thought leadership, uh, innovative thought leadership. Well, any, every, you can do it with, uh, with any, any kind of best practices, but having something like Bayan and getting certified provides a kind of certainty that the people are working in the solution provision internal uh, you know, uh, development of uh, systems as well as customer service are all uh, following a standard. They are on the same page. Yeah. The next thing I would look, look at is the, what, how, how, how does band certification help vendors and solution providers and also consultants? If the consultants, vendors and solution providers recruit, train and utilize band certified professionals, Again, it offers an assurance for themselves and for their own customers. When they actually uh, offer these products that comply with an open architecture, the customers can select these products with more confidence. Right now, Bayan is working on two kinds of certifications. Currently, we've got the people certification, which is being um, managed by Manharan. So people certification provides uh, certification, certificates for people who actually have a competency, have achieved a certain level of competency and passed the exam in Bayan. Next one is product certification. If you're a product vendor or solution vendor, actually you would like to make sure that an independent third party assures you, the market that your product is compliant with Bayan and they can buy the product with confidence. So that certification is under, uh, under uh, progress, is progressing now. And very soon that, that certification, the product certification will be available from Bayan organization. So what does it do to the organization? If you have people certification and later on product certification, of course it should improve the marketability of products. It improves the go-to-market agility because uh, products can be introduced to the market faster oh, and uh, uh, faster and enhance the uh, sales competitiveness as a product which is certified for open architecture like Bayan must be much more attractive for customers as compared to a proprietary product. It provides opportunity for easy integration because there are hundreds of products in the banking area. Uh, many of uh, your companies that you're working for different product companies will be working on a specific niche solution. But that solution cannot be a standalone solution. The bank or the financial institution is expecting a, a, a transparent, complete, integrated product set. So this allows different products to interoperate and work together as a cohesive solution as far as the banks are concerned. Uh, as I said before, one of the major advantages for the vendors and uh, solution providers, you can go beyond your shores. It opens up the global banking market where people are looking for the standard solutions, not non-proprietary solutions, which have got ready-made components, which we can, they can use. So this is a brief introduction. So people following me today, we have requested some of the practicing Bayan certified architects to talk about their own experience from two perspectives. One is why does Bayan certification matter to them personally? And secondly, why does Bayan certification matters to their organization they're working for? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Vish. Um, mm -hmm. One question quickly before we go to the uh, to the next speaker, Warren. Um, so, uh, Fish, you've also been involved with TOGOV and the TOGOV certification right from the beginning. 
many years ago. Uh, and when, once we got in touch with CCNC, uh, you were very keen to support and to ena uh, enable buy-in with the buy-in certification and to help and to support with it. Um, could you maybe elaborate uh, why you're so supportive and keen to support uh, buy-in and buy-in certification? Okay, thank you for the question, Maris. I think basically I've been involved in the open systems and I well, architecture, open architectures for the last more than 20 years. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so I feel passionate about it. I feel that uh, uh, the organization should adopt open architectures and open standards rather than proprietary standards. So that comes from the passion for uh, a passion for open architecture. So Bayan fits into that uh, category very well. Uh, secondly, I feel in the banking area, unless uh, unlike telecom, for example, telecom has got a TMF, Tele Telecommunication Management Forum, producing a framework for the last so many years because of interoperability needs. Yeah. Uh, there are other frameworks in other areas. In the banking area, it was missing. And I personally feel banks are spending a lot of money and time in reinventing the wheel, and that affects every one of us. It's after all our money, and I feel strongly from a personal point of view and from a professional point of view, something like Bayan is needed. And Bayan certification is needed also because that 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 assures when you say when somebody says I'm an architect, you can definitely look at them and saying, did you pass this Bayan certification rather yeah. than taking their word. So that's what I'm interested and passionate about. Yeah. OK, thank you very much. So um, the fish will also stay on as part of the ex um, um, expert panel. So everyone can also ask questions later on to him. Um, if you don't man manage again to come into the chat room, if that doesn't work, uh, please email to uh, Maurits at Van Haag.net. If you have any questions, feel free to, to ask them and we're happy to, to support uh, and to bring the, to answer your questions. Then next up is uh, Warren. Warren, round two. Hi there. Yeah, thanks, yes. thanks Maurits. Um, yeah. So, yeah, if you just step onto the next slide, please, thanks. Yeah. OK, thanks. Yeah, yeah, so my name is uh, Warren Hankin. I uh, I work for uh, Santander in the UK. And um, a little bit of background about about me first, just so you get the context. So kind of I've kind of had my first year's experience in IT, uh, more years than I care to uh, care to recognise. <laughs> and they, they've been across Barclays, Accenture, uh, Lights and Leicester, for, former UK bank that was then uh, bought by Santander. I've been with Santa Dev 12 years now. So that's, that's a little potted history of my, my side. Um, mm. The significant part of my history uh, has been in, in architecture. So currently I'm a solution architect with kind of, it's a strange arrangement with a kind of full scene enterprise architecture as well. Um, so that's that's kind of me. Yeah. Okay, so in terms of certification, um, for, for, for me, this, this is a, an interesting journey because it, certification itself is, is, is being incredibly recent as in the paint is still wet um, and but my involvement with Bayern has, has been a lot longer so so we as a bank we joined uh, around three years ago and um, we started yeah. to practice heavily Bayern uh, about two years ago so we've kind of got a lot of experience in that space prior to the certification now in terms of what the certification means to me I think it's quite a good kind of um, experience from someone like myself having practiced it first and then done the certification so in terms of the going back to what Vish said yeah you know I, I, I can say hey I know Bayan but the, the certification is a, a formal identification yeah. formal evidence of, of, of that fact um, albeit it doesn't make me an actual expert but it certainly does does give you not towards the fact that it's it's some truth in that and also is, is a portable skill uh, so I can take this skill or wherever I wish to go if I wish to pursue a career elsewhere and within the organization you're in as well of course so you know yeah. it, it, many many benefits there it, it gives you recognition in the company uh, and so on as well that's the kind of thing that, that you like or you like leading a, a, or being a champion of a certain uh, a certain discipline within your organization so yeah. that that's um, that's in terms of what it means to me, mm -hmm. what it means to the organisation itself, uh, in my in my opinion. So, so within the Bayan uh, adoption, it's really been an adoption within the architecture community uh, for Santander. So within that community, uh, certainly certification will help accelerate adoption, no doubt about it. 
Um, if I could go back to when we first started to use BAN, um, it's it's obvious now that we would have benefited from certainly from a kind of not not just looking at the certification, but having the training to go with it. This isn't a sales pitch. I don't do sales pitches. But this this is just purely from experience, kind of yeah. trying to leverage some of the model. It's very very big, as you would expect for a what your class as a. Uh, a a specific bank agnostic model. Um, so having some experience provided to you up front would be, I think, very beneficial there. So it's something that accelerates adoption in that space. And from personally for me, the second point about opening up the scope of buy and use cases, thereby benefiting the organization. So you tend to find that you focus on kind of certain um, aspects or certain lenses over the buy and um, framework itself. There's many, many different use cases you can benefit from. And by doing a certification, you kind of force to cover the broad topic of everything, which inherently means that you then become more aware of other other possible advantages that you could potentially investigate um, during your, yeah. your, your journey in your organization. Many other priorities. And it increase the effectiveness of the practice of buying as well, of course, because you have one or more people who have more experience and can give that experience to others, making everybody more efficient in the practicing of, of buy-in and appreciation of it, and, and also doing it in the correct way, of course, which is very important. And the final point there um, is, is around the, the service domain structure, which is you know key, one of the key key premises of, of buy-in itself, from which you hang all of your or your software offering you know, that that principle. So in, in my company, or rather the company I work for, um, the digital transformation we're going through, it's kind of it supported that very well in, in our implementation of APIs as one of the examples. I'll, I'll go to more detail in the in the next slide. So yeah. there we go. That, that's about my, that's my cue. OK. Yeah. OK, so just just very briefly, this is a, a bank agnostic representation which is courtesy of some buy on content, but I thought I'd show it here because this this is reflective of the Santander organization in terms of complexity. So we you know we're, we're an institution, we're a very, very big bank now um, across many countries. And within each country, you have many, many uh, different business units as well. So for example, you know, within UK, we have retail bank, we have private bank, we have corporate bank, we have uh, what we call wholesale bank which is similar to kind of institutional products you can see in that column on the, on the top left. So that's just a picture of kind of the, the, the complexity, the landscape that we're dealing with in, in, in architecture, really, yeah, which is kind of why we've gone, gone to us beyond then to help us with that. Can yeah. to go to the next slide, please? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go through a couple of, uh, well, three three use cases. It's useful to share with, with, uh, with the different uh, organisations. So the first one is using Bayan as a functional language to organize the IT landscape. Now, if you can imagine, you have architecture functions across multiple countries, uh, different languages, different practices, different software and so on. So when uh, what we refer to as group, try to look at the whole picture, it's very challenging. So what we're currently doing is going through uh, a a activity to map service domains to the whole of la the application landscape in every country. Um, and that ultimately would be very powerful because what it then gives you is everybody maps their applications you know, accordingly. Um, th from the group top level, you can see for each service domain how many applications we've got per country. That services are the pretty, pretty similar functionality and also internationally as well. And it gives you then opportunities to look at simplification of that. So maybe we need a, a group a group tool, for example, or rather one for every country, or maybe the country itself has got many implementations of very similar functionalities. And that then leads on to decommissioning opportunities, simplifying your landscape, uh, reduced costs, etc. cetera. So that, that's the first use case. So yeah. next slide, please. Yeah. Okay. Nice, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So API functional reference framework. So we began this journey, gosh, probably just before we engaged by three years ago. That's part of our digital transformation. 
And what we've done with our principles is we've aligned our API designs to buy on service domains where, where possible. It's not easy, um, it's not always possible. So the theory there, which we are practicing, is uh, an API must expose functions from only one BIAM service domain. Yep. Uh, however, inside of that, the software can delegate to other other APIs that represent other service domains in order to fulfil what you class as the, the primary service domain function. But that is always hidden from the consumer. So it's the kind of model that is encouraged from the BIAM side as well. Um, and ultimately, though, those APIs are, are published now in, in, in intranet portal which enables projects, uh, developers, architects, etc., to see what's what's there available to, to also help prevent duplication, uh, aligning to the principle of one service to make one API. Yeah. OK, and then the use case number three. Uh, so we have a few, well, we have quite a few uh, digital principles for helping digital transformation. So we're all rowing in the same direction. And one of those is domain driven yeah. design. And that's one of the primary reasons why we actually kind of went to buying in the first place, because we had we had these principles. We knew that we had to practice domain driven design, which kind of leads to microservices architecture. But the question was, what domain model do we use to do so? We had a, we had one for the bank, but it was pretty simple. And we needed one with far, with far more depth and far more breadth and, and complexity to answer the complex needs of the application landscape you're trying to do your domain driven design over. So that's how we landed on Bion. Um, so the result of that is that by practicing Bion, it kind of in effect forces us to practice domain driven design and the good practices around that. That results then in uh, all of our core services or software to support functionalities from only one Bion service domain. Again, so we have software that's nicely decoupled from other pieces of software in a service orientated manner. They yep. look after their own data for the whole life cycle. Nothing else is allowed to touch that data. Everything has to go through the appropriate API and call service in order to access or perform a function on that data. So that's how we use case number three. Yeah, nice. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Last slide, just yeah. as a general comment. So on that one, uh, so this is just, again, another slide courtesy of Bayern, really, is that I found quite useful. So this is our journey. And I think it's probably a journey that's that's pretty common across all older banks. Certainly, if you know, if you use around more than 15, 20 years ago, this is probably your journey too. Um, so you kind of you got your traditional type one, which is your, your your core systems, which is simply an API in the old-fashioned world, the old world, which is simply a, a, an interface, not mean much more than that. You get to type two, which is you, where you're starting to try to move towards proper service oriented architecture and uh, proper microservices and then driven design. But you're kind of at a hybrid point, and that's probably something that's going to be a very long term coexistence, I suspect, with lots of companies. And then finally, which is the, the, the ultimate target, is to be fully uh, service oriented landscape component architecture. You've got all your wonderful service, all services all separated out and you can plug and play your various services to answer the bank's needs a lot more rapidly than today where we have lots of legacy monolithic systems yeah and that's, that's me doing a, uh, a fast tour yeah <laughs> thank you very much okay. um really great that you could uh, uh, elaborate this and share this with us um then uh, some questions from my side if that's okay um you did now uh, you, you did the buy-in certification. Uh, yeah. How did that journey go for you? Did you experience as being difficult or easy or uh, and what kind of problems did you face and how did you overcome them? Okay, yeah, so we're getting certification. Yeah, it was, it was very enlightening because kind of as a alluding back to my previous point, um, you tend to focus on specific areas that you wish to utilize and it does inhibit somewhat your ability to see the full picture and other yeah. you know, good good potential opportunities you can leverage from using Bion. Um, so that was one of them. In terms of difficulty, um, yeah, it wasn't easy. Uh, and you know, I, I would I would always hope that any exam for a professional certification is is, is never easy anyway. Um, so even though we've been practicing it for kind of around two years now, it was very interesting to see that it wasn't it wasn't easy just to pass. I had to you know read the yeah. material properly. And appreciate other other 
discipline areas of the panel framework as well. So that's my uh, yeah. So that's my my experience of that certification and, and uh, yeah. reading up process. Yeah, I didn't do the training, um, but uh, I think if, if I was on the beginning of the journey, I would I would I would yeah want to utilise some training. So <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that it's an easier uh, it's an easier journey. Um, yeah, th thank you. Then um, also, Warren, you're uh, besi besides doing buy-in within Saturn there, you're also a very active member of the buy-in adoption working group. Yeah. Um, uh, can you elaborate uh, why and what is the added value? And uh, could you give an, uh, an example of that? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, I am. I'm a member of the adoption working group. Um, my entry into that was quite interesting. So, the, so you. Bayan themselves sent out a series of questionnaires to all the members, asking them their opinion about their, their experiences of, of using it, uh, good things, bad things, and so on. And I was quite yeah. keen to uh, to kind of provide that feedback. So I kind of took took that took the role of gathering the feedback from from my uh, my my team, um, yeah. an extended team, um, and. That's where it all started. So then I felt, OK, so let's get involved in the working group because it's a good opportunity to get those experiences put put back into Bayan and for it to become more more uh, digestible from an, from an early adopter uh, uh, side of things, certainly. And it's really good also to share experiences with other with other members, which you, which is quite a, a more rare uh, opportunity, especially in the moment, of course, with, with the COVID situation. Um, yeah. And yeah, so it kind of really leads into the fact that you yeah, have been involved with other working groups as well and uh, not quite as um, active as this one so you can have a you can have a more active role as a contributor or you can have a more passive role as somebody who listens and occasionally contributes and that, that that's fine as well yeah. um, but really it comes down to the more investment you put into it the more you get out of it which is what i always say as a summary of that uh, the membership of any any professional um organization yeah 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 exactly and what what do you so it's difficult of course to point a finger towards what is the the, the well biggest added value but would you say that that it's um uh, kind of the content that you get out of it or maybe the interaction with different members or there's a combination i think the, the content is is obviously really really good um yeah. but additionally you know being able to interact with the, with the buying experts themselves is is invaluable um yeah. and the your interaction with other members helps to further your understanding as as well of course and it also makes yeah. you realize you have a lot of valuable experience to share with other people which gives you a lot of you know kind of professional pride and personal point of view <laughs> that's what we do it for that's uh, yeah exactly yeah okay uh, thank you very much uh, you. for your contribution uh, then we go to the next speaker Hi. So I'll go to the next slide. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yes. Hi. Um, uh, I think uh, Warren gave a, a, a real uh, detailed view of Biden and, uh, and he covered uh, all dimensions. Uh, thank you so much. It'll be difficult uh, to follow from that, but uh, I will present uh, um, my, my, uh, my experience uh, with Biden. So I, I work as a um, lead enterprise uh, architect. Um, my my core experience has been two industries, banking and healthcare. Um, um, so you know, uh, as an individual, uh, I think uh, last year uh, I got uh, I, I took the Bayern certification. Uh, I think one of the important um, takeaways for me one was um, have a credibility to start. A conversation with, uh, uh, you know, with the, with the business stakeholders and have a conversation even within the larger IT community. Um, and the reason I say that is, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, viewing a, a bank uh, in terms of capabilities, I think uh, the the service landscape uh, just just provides it off the shelf, uh, and that's the. Uh, that's the first thing that you know um, that that caught my attention. I was really keen to know more about it um, once I saw the service landscape. Um, from from a, of course um, 
that there is there's content that is available in the public domain but i think when when you undertake the certification uh, you also have a certain sense of rigor in going through the the various elements of what buy and offers as a framework whether it's the uh, service domain uh, you know uh, whether it's in terms of uh, um, the the business objects um, uh, and 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 the the wireframes that are out there i think it gives you a very um, comprehensive view um, of of the industry you're working uh, if you're working in a bank of course uh, i'm assuming that uh, that would be the area of interest um, as an organization um, last year i think um, so so we are a group of um, um, 15 plus enterprise architects um, and all of us last year um, uh, got certified uh, on on buying and i think uh, if i'm not mistaken uh, patrick is on the call so he may recollect uh, um, the you know uh, interacting with us um, and i think yeah. one part of it as an individual uh, which uh, warren and wish alluded to that it's a matter of uh, you know um, uh, professional pride um, um, to 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 take up a, a subject a topic of interest and get certified in it. Um, it doesn't make you the industry expert, but definitely gives you the confidence, gets you a foot in the door, uh, being yep. able to uh, confidently initiate conversations, especially when we are talking about business idea alignment and stuff like that. Um, but from an organization perspective, when an entire department, an entire team of EAs um, get certified, it shows a certain commitment um, that the technology team is able to bring to the table um, uh, you know, uh, and then when we want to engage the senior stakeholders from the line of business, uh, I think um, they are they are they are you know more interested and and they are they are more more willing to give a lending ear. Uh, of course, it is significantly helped by virtue of the common vocabulary that Bayan provides. You know, I remember yeah. going back to the days. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. That must be uh, more than twenty years ago. Uh, when when um, Java was the big thing in the market um, and uh, object oriented programming was, you know, um, really uh, picking up um, and the thing it makes you do is makes you think in terms of objects. I think what Bayan does to you when by the time you're through with the certification, every opportunity you get, you're going to look at the organization. You're going to look at a problem in terms of capabilities and the solutions that are addressing problem statements either in one capability or uh, which cuts across capabilities especially if you want to conceive of customer journeys and so on and so forth i think it, it just helps you structure the problem statement uh, and its corresponding solution in in a common way where, where everyone can relate to the same same way of thinking i think that helps that significantly helps um yeah. Um, and I think uh, you know Warren covered the, the the most important thing, the the service domain. Uh, one of the things that we did was connect service domains to underlying applications, and then you have a, a, a dashboard that talks about how various applications are working together to serve uh, a capability. And sometimes you will have one application serving more than one capability, and these views offer opportunities for you know uh, simplifying the IT landscape rationalization uh, and and you know those are very important conversations especially if if you if you're trying to you know uh, um, you know there, there are few there are only three things I suppose you would do either you are you are uh, improving revenue you are you're managing cost or you're addressing risks so in all these scenarios you would you would simply have to have a certain model so that that can be used as a reference point for you to uh, drive conversation, drive narrative, and get people to look at it uh, in in precisely the same way as you intend them to uh, look at it. I think that's a, that's a that's a significant thing, uh, and 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 Warren covered the the three yeah. parts that were in my mind: uh, domain-driven design, API, and and of course the, the landscape, the IT landscape. Uh, there's one more thing I would perhaps like to add is uh, with uh, with the uh, service landscape 8.0. I think what you get access to is also the business object. So, uh, you know, most of the banks uh, are very aspirational. They want to 
they want to look at data and information architecture in a, in a little more um, concrete way. And I think uh, we could intelligently use the um, business object model to 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 kind of you know view our way through the the data conversation. Um, last but not the least, I think um, this creates a, a, you know by itself creates a base for you to talk about then the next thing, which is service catalog, whether it's a IT service catalog and uh, uh, whether it's a, a business catalog or it's customer facing services catalog and how you structure those and 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 how you know you you can if you if you want to if you're on a journey to basically move into a microservices world i think this kind of foundation is is pretty good and, and i would say more than good it's actually great for us to you know um, step onto that level um, uh, purely from a certification perspective coming back to the um, you know the the, the 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 main part of this webinar i think the certification has helped me um, significantly and I do believe uh, that it also had the organization to become a buy-in member. Of course, you have access to more content. Um, you have the uh, you know uh, um, ability to um, stay more connected with members of the working committee, and I think um, that's that's something uh, really worthwhile. Um, that's all I had. Yeah. <laughs> I just have one slide. Yeah. No, perfect. I, I hope, uh, it uh, it yeah. uh, helps. Yeah, no, perfect. Thank you very much. One slide to cover it all. Really, uh, really strong, really good. Um, so everyone, uh, after this, we go to the questions and answers. Uh, feel free to already leave your questions in the Teams conversation. I must say nobody did so far. So I think that our uh, session has been very uh, elaborate. Uh, we don't raise, raise any questions. So that's uh, really impressive, I think. Um, um, I do have some questions um, also for you, Venkan. Uh, if that's okay, to start sure. off. Um, so I've uh, I wrote down a few. So your team uh, was already uh, certified. Your entire team was already certified from the beginning. Uh, yes. I can imagine that that is yeah that might have given you uh, quite some benefit because the entire team was already at a higher maturity level. Uh, is that so? And could you maybe give an example of uh, how you experienced this? Uh, so um, we started our. So we already had a. Uh, we, we already had a, a proprietary capability model that we were using in the bank, and when it's proprietary, the challenges are that you know the, the upkeep of the model, um, especially in this this part of the world, business architects are very difficult to come by, yeah. and so we we knew that we had to. <laughs> Uh, and perhaps it's true for most part of the world, but mm -hmm. <laughs> um, no, no. We, we needed to get into something that was more community driven, where there were you know more banks, uh, you yeah. know, uh, participating in that conversation. Um, so we, while we talked about it, some of us we took interest and in, and we kind of uh, started reading about it. And um, but when when it was time, we said, you know what, the first crop. Um, we have uh, 15 odd people. Let's organize a, a training session and let's go in. Let all of them get set, certified. Yeah. Um, so I think that was that was um, that was good uh, because obviously there will be always some people who have a lot of interest and they will take initiative and go and learn a lot of things on their own. But there are also yeah. people who are stretched for time and 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 you know for them um, something else could be very important and interesting. Uh, but yeah. you know. The, the certification kind of got us at least on a, a same or not a same at least a similar yeah. level of competence and comfort right so yeah. when we talked by in language um, the other person would not blink i mean i mean they would be they would latch on to it and they would be able to engage and that yeah. was something uh, that we really saw happen and that is very good yeah yeah exactly thanks um, that sounds indeed like a great uh, benefit there. Um, and then, so you, uh, you and your organization chose to uh, to do training, to do an accredited training. Uh, mm -hmm. As you mentioned, it was provided uh, via Patrick. Um, can you tell something more about that training? How did you experience? Because there's indeed several ways to um, to get ready, get 
uh, all the information and knowledge regarding buying you chose for training how did you experience this training uh, the, the, you know it, it, fortunately it was pre covid uh, era um, yeah. so, so we had the luxury of having a, a you know um, uh, on prem in, in the classroom training very interactive yeah. um, um, you know uh, of course uh, uh, you know you know so so the initial training hours was slated for a certain number of hours but we really um, overshot those hours because we had so many <laughs> other questions um, so it was yeah. very interactive uh, we had a case study it was like a, it was like a, a, you know we, we took something from our situation in the bank and then we tried to kind of apply the buy and framework and we worked through it and that was very um, yeah. uh, useful um, the the other thing, of course, uh, was uh, um, you know when, when you have interaction with uh, um, um, you know a, a very seasoned enterprise architect who's also providing you the training. The advantage is that then you can actually do um, a practical, a real life problem analysis. Uh, you know, actually we actually set aside some time for that because then we wanted to see what what does it what does it mean? How do we how do we apply something hey this looks extremely theoretical in the framework obviously every framework is meant to cater to a very large uh, pool of audience um, yeah. and uh, what every framework has to be tailored for the organization where it's put to use right you yeah. and you you need to you need a place where you start and then eventually you you navigate through the remainder of the framework to figure out what are the more advanced, more sophisticated elements of the framework that you would apply? So you needed to get your arms around that, and I think the training provided that us, us with that kind of, you know, um, uh, that that kind of, uh, I would say, visceral knowledge, if you will. So so we didn't try to bite everything off, uh, you know. We didn't do that. We didn't try to apply the whole thing in one go. Um, that would not have really worked. So we went step yeah. by step, and I think those were. Those were also the recommendations that came out of the training. Say, so, you know, don't do a full bang. Um, uh, you know, don't kill yourself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but do it and do something. Uh, see the benefits, and then that automatically will set the stage for the next thing uh, in terms yeah. of adoption. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Perfect. Thanks again, uh, uh, Ms. Selina, If you're ready. Yes, I'm here. Good morning, yes. everyone, or good evening. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Perfect. OK, I'll go to the next slide and just let me know um, if you like the next slide. If I mention it or big pause. Yeah, yeah sure. There we we go. can uh, go to the next slide. <laughs> OK, very effective so Thanks. far. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so just an introduction. Uh, I'm a, my name is Maslina Cadiz Tostevin. I'm a senior management consultant with Enterprise Architecture in the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, CIBC. And I've been with CIBC about six years, uh, focusing mainly on strategic transformation and more recently on the model management practice. Uh, prior to that, I was actually working at an insurance company, uh, always in technology, but in different divisions um, within technology as well. So um, we can go to the uh, next slide. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, what does the um, buy-in certification mean to me? Um, I think I'll just reiterate what Vish has already stated, as well as Warren. Uh, it is um, another milestone for my professional development. Um, I think to be certified is uh, to be recognized in terms of having some expertise in, yeah. uh, in the buy-in framework. Um, but it is also a portable skill that I can carry with me uh, and it's applicable um, to the finan any financial industry uh, member as well as uh, to any vendor that may be business partnering with a financial industry. So yeah. I, I decided to go for the certification just because it is an industry standard and it is portable. Uh, yeah. What the buying certification means to my organization, um, just some history around um, my organization we started off uh, maybe 10, 12 years ago with a proprietary model, the high, buy, high performance banking model uh, that we obtained through an engagement with Accenture. And, um, and over the time, we kind of uh, customized it. It, it. it was modified organically to suit our current needs. 
but it was proprietary. And so yeah. we, we understood that in order to do business today, we needed to evolve um, how we govern our technology landscape using models that were more industry-based. Uh, so we wanted to shift from our local native uh, proprietary model to one that was an industry standard and that would promote a ubiquitous language that would enable us to have um, you know, interactions and conversations with other financial institutions and with vendors like for instance, Accenture or Deloitte, uh, and it would we would be employing a common taxonomy, a common language. Okay. Yeah. Um, we also wanted to. We knew that going forward, uh, we needed to be able to uh, to deal more effectively with our business partners, with the business, and so we knew that we needed a model that could help us. Uh, technology that us being technology shift more to the left side, meaning to understand, to develop business acumen, to understand business capabilities, to understand the business overall. And with buy-in, um, there is a an artifact called the value chain or the bank on a page. With buy-in, it gives you a very good view yeah. of the various capabilities that the bank can have. You, you don't need all the, you know, all the capabilities. Not we don't necessarily support all the capabilities, but it gives you a good viewpoint, a landscape of all the capabilities that can that can be supported within the bank. And uh, you can attribute it to the various functions within the organization as well, okay? So we wanted something that was uh, comprehensive, that was industry-based, that would position us towards the future, uh, that would promote um, API development and SOA frameworks as well. So, yeah. um, so that was one of the primary drivers for us to go, uh, shifting into an industry standard, supporting strategic transformation by engaging more with the business and uh, moving towards a SOA-based framework. Uh, we have a lot of legacy systems as well that are monolithic. We are in the process of going through uh, SOA domain-driven design, as Warren had mentioned earlier, and that would mm -hmm. in turn support agile delivery. So those were some, that, that's, the certification, I'm speaking more about the value of buy-in in that context, but the certification certainly means that our organization is committed to the framework. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. how sure. how was uh, buy-in adopted in my organization? I think like uh, with Santander, uh, it's been rolled out more within the enterprise architecture team. And um, it, I guess it was done by design because uh, we had a model, it was more technology-based, we shifted to buy-in, which is more of a bridge between technology and the business, it's a business capability reference framework. Uh, but we, we, we wanted to make sure that our architects understood buy-in, that we understood the framework. So we wanted to roll it out first amongst ourselves. Having said that, uh, buy-in is, um, there's a wealth of information about buy-in. There's a wealth um, of information that uh, individually you need to digest to really understand it. And there are different ways of going about it. We we had been participating in chair and also chairing the buy-in wealth management uh, group last year, working yeah. group last year. And mm -hmm. we were able to, um, to partner with the buy-in members to develop you know, to, to develop use cases and from use cases to go to business scenarios and to really apply and gain practical experience on how buy-in could be employed within the organization. And so um, for us, it was a learning. And uh, as, as, as was mentioned earlier, the theoretical knowledge is important. The practical experience is even more important, I think, because that's yeah. really where it starts clicking in, where you start understanding, okay, here are the different ways of really employing uh, buying as a framework and using it. Um, yeah. We are still in the early journey of our of, of using buy-in. One of the first things that uh, we've done is to uh, map our application portfolio to the buy-in framework. So we're using it as, as a reference framework so that we can understand based on the buy-in service domains and capabilities, what are the underlying technologies that support it? Where are our current investments? Where are our potential gaps? Where are the service domains that have um, shared um, 
you know, they have they they have shared usage across different uh, lines of businesses, etc. But it gives us insight into our technology landscape. That was the intention um, of rolling it out. The 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 plan is really to use um, buy-in as a framework to further support um, a service-oriented architecture, domain-driven design, but also uh, to help govern the an APR marketplace that we develop in-house uh, uh, to support yeah. discovery uh, and to support potential reuse or to accelerate development. So th th those are the intentions of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I think that was it, right, from your um, side on, Selina? Yeah, I'm yeah, here. Perfect. Yeah, thank you very much for elaborating. I'll go to the, uh, the next slide, which is question and answer, but I, I will start with you, Ms. Selina, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so regarding the, uh, the buy-in certification, uh, you did the certification. Uh, you also passed with quite a good mark, I believe. Um, do you have any trips, as any tips and tricks uh, for people that want to get certified? Uh, they, they have seen the syllabus, so they know the book. Um, what would you recommend? How can they, um, how can they most easily execute this journey? Um, so I, uh, even though we implemented buy-in only this March, um, and I only got certified, uh, I don't know, two weeks ago, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. but I've been exposed to buy-in more than a year ago. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, what helped me most was I started off with just watching some of the videos that were out there, uh, reading some of the um, how-to guides and familiarizing mm -hmm. myself with some of the terminology, then going through the ebook, 2019 yeah. ebook. What was most helpful, I found, was uh, actually, you know, the um, the platform. You have an Ednet platform for the uh, exam, practice exams, mm -hmm. and I found those uh, actually quite helpful. Um, I think that if you run through the whole gamut of uh, knowledge that Bain has, it's very difficult to digest. And uh, sometimes when you're using Bain for a specific in a specific context, like the wealth management, you know, use case scenarios, mm -hmm. translating that, et cetera. You're very focused on one area. What the exam did was to refocus me on the general wealth yeah. of knowledge within mm -hmm. buy-in. And, and I think that um, I, I would concur with Warren that it wasn't easy <laughs> to yeah. read through everything. Yeah. Um, but I think that uh, if you have, if you have familiarity with the service landscape, if you have familiarity with uh, some of the principles around buying uh, in terms of the design and the, the structure, um, then I think you should be should be good to 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 take the exam, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. OK, thank you. Uh, thank you for that. And so um, maybe your organization, but also uh, uh, not your organization, but just uh, in an abstract uh, level. Who would you recommend or who do you think that um, could use the buying certifica certification within a financial service provider, within a bank? Uh, should it just be the solution architects or also business architects or um, from your point of view? Uh, well, for the foundational certification, it's good to have a basic understanding of buying yeah. and uh, basic sounds quote unquote, simple and <laughs> basic, uh, but I, I know from having read all the materials leading up to the exam that it's not as basic, uh, it's pretty yeah. broad. I think that um, definitely architects, domain architects would benefit from taking it. We have domain yeah. architects, which we distinguish from solution architects. Uh, they, have the, mm -hmm. they have more of a broad horizontal view of the architecture across the enterprise they definitely would benefit from it. Uh, and as well, um, I think business architects, you know, yeah. um, I, I think ultimately, uh, if, if it is to, to become the common language that bridges technology and the business, uh, we need the business architects involved. We need some basic understanding, maybe even from the business, uh, just to have that common understanding of what a service domain is, that it's discrete, that it's canonical, meaning it's commonly understood and interpreted. Those are yeah. the kinds of things you want to promote. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Th thank you very much. And mm -hmm. uh, Warren, then the same question to you. So um, maybe you 
completely disagree, Ms. Ms. Lina. No. Um, so uh, for you, who do you think that the Bayern certification would um, work for within an organization? Um, yeah, I thought it was very, very similar to what Marcelina said, really. So, it's the, the, you know, the architecture community in general is the, the obvious candidate. So, I guess it depends on your labels you use, but um, kind of going top down. So, from, from enterprise, business architecture, solution architecture, yeah. domain architecture, we have both those labels. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, kind of also, what I would add in. Uh, through more recent developments the last kind of year and a half or so data architecture or information architecture as well in in that because uh, as patrick um kind of mentioned this morning yeah that there's there's a lot more um deeper content yeah. on the artifacts we now we have within bion for for looking at the the modeling side for the yeah. for the object model and uh, the the control records which is essentially the the the, the kind of semantic expectation of what the messages should contain within each service domain etc so yeah so that, that was that was as my thoughts on that one yeah yeah okay thank you um and so this morning um uh, we also had a, a speaker um who added the value of uh, the, their organization was trained all at once with uh, 11 uh, people 11 professionals they all got trained at once and they really experienced the benefit of everybody having the equal level of knowledge regarding buying and they really benefited uh, from this of course if you do it via training uh, getting certified it's much easier you can apply uh, the use cases within your bank so that has some great benefits uh, you didn't take that journey uh, although you would have had uh, Warren if you had the choice um, uh, but still do you also have some tips and tricks uh, to people listening here, uh, how they can easiest um, get certified? Um, yeah, again, it depends on where you are with your journey uh, on, on bio. So if you are near the beginning, I'd, I'd, I'd kind of would suggest that training would be an accelerator to, to that. Um, we didn't get the opportunity for for that yeah. uh, just because of the way in which the the uh, the adoption was uh, by was driven and where it was driven from yeah but um yeah I, I would say you know accelerate your understanding then then training would would come in good good partnership and again kind of partially because that can bring you some some good practical advice within the context of your specific organization not just you know just generically with with uh, you know the, the generic kind of bank yep. model which which by of course is, is meant to be with it being an open model um so that yeah so that's why i would, I would say on that one yeah and from your personal experience do you have some tips like okay research that paper or just read very thoroughly through that chapter or just always answer <laughs> 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 um, I think the, the answer is there's no shortcut. So yeah. you know, it, okay. it's it, there's a serious breadth in there. So you're better taking your time and, and trying mm -hmm. to understand the content properly, and, and maybe even asking for some. You know, if you don't go down the training path, then then you know, ask for some some sessions with the with the Bayan uh, experts architects because that's what they're there for, as if you remember. Um, yeah. So, so you use them, you know, because you, you'll be surprised at the um, at um, how quickly they they can understand your your uh, questions or your concerns or your problems and and help provide you with with a way forward. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so uh, I'm not sure if uh, if somebody still wants to add questions or comments, please add them to the chat or uh, send an email to me. As in the morning sessions, so far we didn't get any questions, uh, so probably we elaborate everything uh, very clearly. So also available is uh, Patrick. I believe also Vinu is also is also available. Patrick is the chief architect of Bayern. Uh, Vinu is also an expert in Bayern, and also Vish can explain a lot of content. Um, I will just in the meantime keep uh, asking some questions uh, and keep on the dialogue. Um, so my next question, I think it's to uh, let me just open it in the group and then see whoever feels like answering. So, Ms. Alina Warren, if you feel like answering, feel free. Um, so buying is very global uh, and uh, to whoever will answer the question. Do you think that 
Um, also, banks uh, or financial institutes that have a not as high maturity level, do they benefit as much as banks that have a higher maturity level? Or is that the benefit about the same? Or um, I'm not sure who would like to take the question. Uh, this year, I'll have a quick answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, see, uh, from my experience again with other uh, frameworks like Togaf, the, yeah. the, one of the things that uh, most organizations which want to introduce uh, a framework, an open framework, first they think about is their readiness assessment. Okay. Yeah. So the readiness assessment in terms of the culture of the organization, senior management commitment, are they uh, knowledge of the people? The, uh, how do they, you know, their internal uh, situation in terms of where they are, in terms of legacy systems yeah. or uh, digital transformation? So from various angles, from technology angle, from digital transformation angle, from people angle, from cultural angle, they look at it and they say, yeah, we are ready for it. And they are ready, even if they are not ready, the first step is to look at what is available and try and understand it. So what I'm saying is depending on the maturity level, whether they are in zero, one, two, three, they set their own targets. We are in zero. Maybe we should right. like to go to one in, in two <laughs> years time. OK, yeah. so the this certification and training have got a place for everyone. Depending yeah. on where you are in the journey, you get benefits. So I would say that it's valid for everyone. But the amount of, uh, you know, uh, what can I say, the way you go about it, depends on the maturity of the organization and readiness in terms of the commitment, the especially senior management commitment. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. OK, thank you. Um, then Hello, next, everyone. Uh, yeah. I also want to add something from my experience. Um, mm -hmm. It's Patrick. So maybe, here. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Thank you, Patrick. Patrick yeah. here. Um, I receive very often questions from junior enterprise architects and banks, which means that our um, uh, junior IT and business people who are trying to find their way in uh, what is it, what does it mean, a banking architecture, and they start reading uh, beyond as, an, um, as a quick start for having the whole picture. So very often junior architects also benefit from the quick start but they benefit the most, of course, and the more mature that they become, the more they understand the real value of it. That's what I want to add. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Patrick. So next question is also back to you. Um, can you maybe, as being the uh, buy-in uh, buy chief architect, um, can you give some examples or name some other banks that are involved uh, within buy-in and are considering or doing a buy-in implementation at the moment? And what sorts of different fields uh, are they in, like open banking, API, data? Yeah, um, uh, of course, I don't have to mention uh, Santander yeah. because they are, they are there in the... <laughs> In, in the call, but uh, I, I yeah. can add a use case. I can add a use case of Santander. That is that Santander, uh, it was in, in Germany, if I am not mistaken, uh, they tried to use the Beyond landscape as a mechanism to support them in, um, in uh, defining their IT organization structure. So that's yeah. an extra an extra use case from uh, Santander. Then we have... Uh, okay, I've got four uh, now. <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, sorry, thank you. Uh, PNC, which is uh, using uh, very extensively uh, beyond for the open APIs. Mm -hmm. So they are really working on uh, on developing numerous of uh, of APIs based on, uh, on beyond. Then another yeah. uh, big bank that is, uh, that is very active nowadays is Wells Fargo. And mm -hmm. whilst Fargo, they are uh, very active in the in the domain of the information architecture. Okay, that's uh, that's everything which has to do with uh, supporting their artificial intelligence and their machine learning uh, uh, stuff. Because there, they need an um, an um, a, a common language actually. Yeah. Uh, interesting to know is also Achmea, which is not a bank, mm -hmm. but which is an insurance company. Which is yeah. uh, using our our bank, uh, PSDB Bank in um, in uh, in China, which are using intensively uh, the APIs and the way of working and the 
and and the user journeys in in beyond. So they want to be the leader in uh, in China for uh, for APIs based on uh, on beyond. Yeah, I can yeah. continue. Yeah, 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 great, great. Thank you, thank you for sharing those uh, use cases. Uh, Mar uh, Marit, uh, apologies, I I have to drop off the call now. Yeah, I'm afraid no I've got to stop at three o'clock, but uh, yeah, the no opportunity. Worries. Jeez. Yeah, thank you, uh, Warren, Bye. for uh, supporting. No problem. Bye. Yeah. Um, okay, then I'll go to um, Vish, uh, maybe to you if that's okay. Um, could you maybe elaborate um, some career pros uh, prospects uh, once someone gets Pine certified? Okay, I think I look at it from uh, you know any framework certification. As I said, I draw my experience most from uh, like Togaf and others were involved for the last uh, 18 years. So what yeah. happens is that uh, uh, career prospects, uh, depending on where one is coming from, varies. First of all, the very basic thing is at the end of a, a training course, or a, they say, uh, you open my mind. Mm -hmm. That means the architecture mindset creation, irrespective of whatever they are doing, in whatever they are doing, they may continue to do the same thing. For example, if they're a, if they're a network uh, technical person or infrastructure person or uh, application person, they may not change their job on, on, the, day, on, on the day they leave the you know tra training or certification. Yep. What they do is they'll try to do the same thing. So in terms of career prospects, at least it opens their mind to say, instead of working in their own small little silo, technical silo, they're saying, yep. this has got a bigger purpose. I understand the big picture. That itself is a great eye opener and opens opportunities, possibilities for them to progress in their own way. The second one is those who want to become like a seriously solution architects or enterprise architects in a, in a financial institution or a bank. For them, yep. actually, there's a career path. The career path is uh, starting from, as uh, uh, Patrick was saying, some of them start as aspiring architects. That means they're interested, but they don't know where to start. They're very passionate yep. about it. So they start at, uh, you know, at the junior level. Then they go on to uh, more senior levels and go into the enterprise architecture level where they look at the whole organization. And uh, of course, they, many of them end up, and uh, I know many of my people attended training over the years, end up as uh, chief architects or CTOs of organizations, you know? And yeah. uh, so the, the career path is there, but as a profession, architecture as a profession is not, uh, you know, well-defined. So what happens is uh, the uh, frameworks like Bayan start defining the architecture profession. As somebody was saying that uh, in their organization, they define the architecture profession based on Bayan itself. So one way the Bayan can be used in an organization is the entire career path and the organizational profession. For example, if you pass, if you pass Bayan certification, you get promoted to the next level, okay? Yeah. So, so think, and if you use Bayan in a few projects, you get another additional marks, you go to the next level. Okay. Yeah. So I know organizations which have used uh, these uh, frameworks as a way of defining the entire career structure uh, in other industries like insurance industry. Same thing will happen in uh, in more as the organization more mature. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, now a question to uh, Messalina and then afterwards to Vish. If uh, sorry, to, not Vish to Vinu, if that's okay. Um, Messalina, uh, if you're uh, available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. I also asked the question to uh, Warren before. You are also quite active in the um, uh, working group, in the adoption working group. Mm -hmm. uh, could you maybe elaborate uh, why and some, uh, and maybe, yeah, why you're part of the adoption working group and do you experience some benefits of that? And could you uh, elaborate those? Yes, for sure. Um, Yes, yeah, so when we rolled out buy-in, um, we recognized right away that uh, the people change management effort would be quite significant. And mm -hmm. so we were very interested in understanding um, what the approach should be in rolling it out, um, how we yeah. should be engaging the teams. Um, we, we knew upfront that uh, we would not have the luxury of training everyone. Yeah. And so I wanted to find out what the experience was from other teams, uh, how they yeah. had approached the rollout mm. process and the adoption process. And then, of course, once you roll out, I'm also interested in understanding uh, what are the measures that you apply to uh, demonstrate that it has been successfully rolled out, that there is usage, that there is value to, to the business and to the teams. 
so that's so it was very useful for me to to join the adoption group and to hear what other people were doing. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, also to share my own experience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And do you, uh, it's a different question. I think you already quite answered it, but uh, do you think that the communication with different members uh, and peers, was that the biggest added value or to just have a dialogue and to, um, what, what do you, is that the biggest added value? Speaking yes, to other I, peers. Or? Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting because uh, when we move from our proprietary model to the uh, to buy-in as an industry standard, one mm -hmm. of the business drivers was we wanted to leverage the expertise, the knowledge, the experience of other yeah. members within the industry. So yeah. that is definitely a, a plus. Uh, I know that Patrick had mentioned um, other banks that were engaging in different. Um, uh, areas like uh, PNC, they did significant work on their APRs marketplace, yeah. the, the open banking. We were interested to hear about that. Uh, we were interested to look at that sandbox, the API sandbox, just because it gave us some ideas too on how we could approach our own internal API development and how we could govern it. So there's definitely, there's definitely value in exploring it. Um, but the key is that you also commit internal resources to participate in the working group, because if you don't do that, then you, there's yeah. no learning to be had. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. OK, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. That's very cool, valuable. That's very valuable uh, um, elaboration content. Thank you. Um, then, uh, Vinu, are you there? Are you hey. available? Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm there. Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you very much. So, Vinu, you're now involved with Bayern for quite a few months. You've been a trainer in Togolf and Enterprise Architecture for many years. Um, uh, you also, the moment you joined uh, with Bayern, you were quite energetic um, and you're excited about the, the content of Bayern itself. Very um, much, very much. Yeah, great. Could you maybe, so um, maybe you could elaborate as a trainer uh, why, uh, what is the reason why somebody should attend the Bayern certification training? I think there are a couple of uh, points very important for everyone here online. Mm -hmm. uh, one is that uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have, after a very long decade of talking service orientation in general, to have specific to banking solutions, banking services, a framework that can actually make it happen. Yeah. And I was, so, I was so happy because I was, I was working in major banks earlier in Bank of China, as well as in Trade Bank of India, Maybank and uh, including CIMB per se when they started the enterprise architecture team. So I yeah. was so happy that, well, there is, a, the, there is a good framework that can be adopted, and, and that's one. And the second thing is all the benefits of uh, the so far well-developed uh, uh, frameworks like TOGAF and maybe ISA Global or Zachman, you name it. Yeah. I think Bayern has brought together some kind of a cohesiveness, a common vocabulary, bringing in the real meaning in terms of how well they can be implemented for banking. Yeah. And I, I was really endured by that. And I think that is the second point. And third point, uh, but not the least, is it also in terms of the difficulties, the complexities that the bank has. Bank is a unique vertical industry. Unlike other verticals, it deals with our monies. It deals with our economy. And, and to enable, like Wish was mentioning the, uh, earlier, you know, uh, as a stakeholder, as a customer of a bank, I think to train people to make sure the banking infrastructure functions well, I think yeah. that's a pleasure. So I yeah. think these are the three main points. I love it. Oh, perfect. Thank you very much. And um, then, so, so uh, of course, there's many BIND members and organizations that are a BIND member. Uh, if you're a BIND member, you get access to a lot more uh, content. Um, do you think that the BIND certification, of course, it's relevant for BIND members, that it's also relevant for non-BIND members? Oh, very much so. <clears throat> very much so. In terms of your uh, uh, portal, which has the uh, complete uh, uh, the the bank the business object modeling the specifics of the uh, relationship the details of the service as a bank you know that actually brings to brings together a real value to uh, both buy-on members as well as non-buy-on members 
because ultimately it is to collaborate, like Wish was mentioning. It was it is the it is not just inside a bank. We are talking beyond a bank. We are yeah. talking about B two B interactions, and we are not just limiting ourselves to A two A. And the open banking and the uh, API uh, microservices coming, and then even the question as to as a bank, uh, how will I place some specific uh, uh, applications on the cloud? I mean, these yeah. can be answered through uh, Bayan. So I think it's 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 very important that way. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your uh, elaboration and your view. Thank you. That's very helpful. Um. Then I think if there's no other questions uh, coming in, or maybe one of the other speakers like to comment, I have a final question towards um, Patrick, if you're available, Patrick. Yep, here I am. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, as uh, Chief Architect of Bayern, uh, could you give us some insight of some developments that are going on within Bayern um, uh, that's coming out that we can expect, that we can look forward towards? Yeah, um, the latest release that is uh, published is the, is the version 80.0 of Beyond. It is published the 23rd of uh, September last year. And now for members, we are at the point that we're going to release an 8.1 um, uh, version of Beyond. What is the big difference? It is the added content, for yeah. example. Uh, in the version 8.1, we will have now all the control records modeled in the and provided uh, in the in, in the HTML version. We will also have the many more business object model diagrams from the service domains. We will have the links from the uh, service operations, let's say the the, the APIs to the yeah. input output parameter, all these type of things will be uh, provided. The sequence diagrams will be of a higher quality. Uh, the, the business capability models will also be more elaborated than was in the previous version and so on and so on. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. And I believe that um, for Bayern members, there's a lot of content available uh, within Bayern, right? Correct. So also for non-Bayern members, what, what is out there? What can they find? Um, the, the big difference between um, what we provide to, um, to everybody versus only to members is that uh, members can have the content of uh, the repository in an Excel, in an XML version, in an Archimate mm -hmm. uh, version, uh, in a UML uh, version, they can download it for use in their own tooling. Yeah. That's one thing. Another thing is that uh, members have the availability of what we call our, our member wiki. And the member wiki, that's actually an uh, information portal that continuously gives the, um, the ongoing content production in the different working groups. So uh, the members can continually follow and participate in what is going on in this uh, Beyond content. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. And then now I promised the very last question. Uh, this one's gonna be to Vish, if that's okay, Vish. Yeah, thank you. If you're available. Yeah, so uh, Vish, if um, I'm a buy-in member, let's say I'm a buy-in member or I'm uh, new to buy-in, um, uh, we might already work with buy-in or not, um, what would you recommend where to start? What should I do first? What should I do second? Um, yeah, what would you uh, suggest? I think, uh, you know, what's happening, uh, I'm part of the adoption working group. I think uh, some of the others are here, Hans, uh, others who are involved in this. Basically, uh, the the step-by-step the -step process is, uh, from an organization point of view, is uh, very simple, very logical. Uh, yeah. It's like for any, for any other you know framework of this type. What we have to do is the first step is the discovery phase mm -hmm. uh, to find out where we are, what is our journey in terms of digital transformation, what is the bank's uh, you know strategic directions, how are we uh, going to you know go there, and what is the value of a framework, and how is it fitting into our organization culturally, geographically, and all that. So the readiness assessment and the initial discovery phase, that's the first yeah. thing. 
I would say that is kind of a, either a workshop for two, three days and uh, internally using maybe some of the external mentors like uh, any available in this group, uh, our uh, uh, you know, different people attending this, uh, mm -hmm. this uh, webinar. So basically that's a discovery phase. So most organizations, even if they're not committed, if they don't want to spend a lot of money, I would suggest you go through a discovery phase. This is what happened in Toga from my experience. A three-day okay. workshop uh, uh, involving uh, relevant people, some from the senior management, some from the architects, chief architect level. And then once they go through the discovery phase, they identify how it should be adopted. Where, where does the, because I, my, my personal feeling is no framework is implemented in an organization. The okay. framework is gradually evolved in an organization. It's, it has to fit into the culture. It has to fit into the journey rather than coming and saying, boom, you know, implement the framework. It never happens. So that's the first step. Having done that, you identify the, your own journey, how to customize it, which, which organization unit. For example, it could be introduced into one organizational unit or to address one pain point. For example, we have this big issue in customer service. Can we use Bayan for, the, for addressing that? So it could be a pain point. It could be a specific organization. So it is done bit by bit. Nobody can have a huge uh, company-wide implementation overnight. So that yeah. is the first. Then you go select a particular area and either you call it a pilot or first part of an introduction. Saying that, mm -hmm. okay, if we have a three months, this is a step-by-step. -step. Small, first is a workshop for three days, followed by about three months or six months of pilot saying that, okay, now this pilot is to address a specific problem that's not only showcasing to the rest of the organization, but we learn from the pilot. What are the learnings from that pilot? So finish yeah. that, the limited objective, and then you can say the next step, next milestone is say, having learned from the pilot, how do we now roll out to rest of the organization in what time frame? So being a new framework, in most cases, the companies, large organizations won't commit, you know, like yeah. a big amount of money and resources to do it. So that would be, in my sense, my uh, take on this common sense approach. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I think that's a very good uh, ending. Um, yeah. So if um, the some the buying uh, experts will still remain available uh, in the Teams meeting uh, in the well in the Microsoft Teams team. So you can still ask questions there, find some more relevant information, or reach out to us. Um, uh, when you want to have more info or help or support or anything in that sort. Um, thank you very much, uh, Vish, for uh, helping with this session and co-hosting it. Also, Ramesh, thank you for your help. And Selina, also thank you for speaking. Patrick, thank you. Um, yeah, this was it. And then um, we leave it hereby and I uh, uh, wish everybody um, a good ending of their day or follow-up of their day, uh, wherever you're based. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.